Now, what you can see here is that when we first started growing these things, the wafers were very small. This is because the bulls were very small, and this is what we actually processed. So as time has gone on, we've gone from one inch to two inch to four inch to six inch to eight inch. We're all the way up to 12 inch wafers now. So this is the size of the, uh, of the wafer that is used currently in the microelectronics industry, all right? There is talk of about going to 450 millimeter wafers, which would be 16 inch, but probably won't happen until 2022 or later. Now, once I have this wafer, I have to turn around and figure out how I'm gonna make a chip out of this, right? I'm gonna make a whole bunch of transistors on this thing. The way you do that is that you're actually gonna start by cleaning the wafer. Everything has to be very, very clean. This is why it has to be done in a clean room. And then you're going to spin on a photoresist. A photoresist is a thin plastic layer that goes over the surface that's photosensitive. And then I will put it into a system in which I can expose that photoresist and open holes in that photoresist. That allows me to do things like etch or add impurities through ion implantation or other processing steps where I'm gonna actually go about making the transistor. Then what I'll do is I'll wipe off that photoresist or I'll burn it off, ash it off, and then I'll do another layer and another layer. And you keep doing this over and over and eventually you're gonna get your transistor built. Then you have to connect all the transistors. So you're gonna start laying down all these layers of metal eight, nine layers of metal on top of it, each one separated by a dielectric. So it takes about a month and a half to actually process that. At the end of that month and a half, however, what you'll have is a wafer that looks something like this, all right? This is a wafer from Intel that's been processed, and each one of those four squares represents one of your Pentium processors. So this is effectively 350 laptop computers, right? Now these have to be chopped up and then put into a packaging, hermetically sealed into a package, so that they can then function in your computer. So this will be shipped off to Singapore, diced up, put into packaging, sent back, and then Apple or whomever you're buying your computer will then stick that, these chips into your computer.